Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, the church does celebrate the third Sunday after Easter, and my sermon is based upon the gospel appointed for today, coming to us from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, which I will read to you right now with your kind permission. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. There said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, What is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that, I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again, a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned unto joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now, for, now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, my dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, as I just read to you again, coming to us from the 16th chapter of this Gospel of St. John, St. John, again, is reporting the events and the words that transpired at the Last Supper, what has come to become as the farewell discourse, because it was at the Last Supper, remember, dear friends, that our blessed Lord was preparing the disciples for his coming departure. Because bear in mind during what has been come to known as the, the three years, the, the ministry years, if you will, the three years that the disciples spent in the company of our blessed Savior. They had spent three years traveling with our Lord, traveling with our blessed Savior, living with him day in and day out, listening to him preaching and teaching and talking to others about our Heavenly Father, and seeing with their own eyes all the great miracles that our blessed Lord had performed in front of their very eyes. Again, our blessed Lord was preparing them, because now was the time as they approached Jerusalem. Now was the time the time that our Lord had been speaking about when he said, My time is not yet come. Now was the time. Now was the time coming ever closer where he would climb that hill at Calvary forced to carry his own cross. And so you see, dear friends, our blessed Lord was referring to these times where they would see, meaning the disciples, they would see with their own eyes our Lord mocked and spit on and reviled and scourged and hit, made to carry his own cross, and made again to die on that cross. A horrible death. And so it was for these reasons that our blessed Lord was saying to the disciples again, Ye shall lament, 
and wail and have sorrow. But he didn't finish it there. Again, he stated that, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. So often, dear friends, again, in this world that we live in, there's so much as human beings that we find great joy in. I find great joy in going to a nice day spent at the ballpark watching my favorite baseball team. I spend such, have such great joy when I go and spend with my family and have good time sharing a meal together and talking and laughing and conversing. I have great joy when even when I do things around my home because I feel a sense of great accomplishment, you see. All of us, you and I, we can all come up with our own ideas with our own opinions with our own examples of what brings joy to us and yet in the human perspective very often joy quickly turns into sorrow one day we're fine perfectly healthy and the next day it turns out that we have some disease that we were previously unaware of now that we have to face dire consequences, perhaps. One day we're going to our jobs and everything is fine and perfect, and the next day we find that we receive the news that we're being laid off and we no longer have a job, and sub subsequently we don't have a paycheck to help put a roof over our head, pay for the bills, and so on and so forth. And then we are, again, fearful, wondering what's going to happen to us. Again, whether it be things of joy, whether it be things of sorrow, we all have our own examples of what has caused us joy, what has caused us sorrow. And yet, despite the fact that we have joy, despite the fact that we have sorrow, again, in this world, our Lord promises us again. Our Lord promises us, as he did promise the disciples that he was speak, speaking to at the Last Supper, your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Last week, those of you who, again, Listen to my sermon when I was speaking. Last week, I made the point to remind you about St. Peter and when he wrote his epistle. Again, St. Peter was writing in the point that I was making. St. Peter, to a large degree, again, was writing to servants and slaves in the Roman Empire. So many of us, again, are servants and slaves to this world. We are slaves of, again, wanting to be rich. We are slaves of wanting to be powerful. We are slaves, whether they be actual addictions to substance abuse or alcohol or what have you, whether we're servants to, again, the latest fads and trends. We just have to have the, the latest electronic doodads or we have to have the latest fashion styles or we just have to have the latest tennis shoes or sneakers or what. The list goes on and on. But our blessed Lord is reminding us again, dear friends, again, that we as Christians... We have great faith in our hearts, despite what the world throws at us, despite what the world does to us, despite everything that happens to us in this world. Again, despite all of that, our true joy consists in a relationship with our blessed Savior. Going back again to St. Peter, the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 1, verse 8, we read the following. Whom having not seen, ye love. 
in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You see, again, dear friends, the Christian in that sense, as St. Peter just described, is very much like the mother that our blessed that our blessed Lord spoke about in the gospel passage that I just read to you. When he makes reference to the woman who is experiencing great travail, great pain, unspeakable agony as she's giving birth. And yet our Lord contended that when she did give birth, all her pain went away. She didn't think about that pain any longer because now all of her concentration was on the joy that her child came into the world. So too, you could say St. Peter is, is, again, we could use the example of a woman who was pregnant, a mother, whom though she has not given birth, she has not seen, obviously, with her own eyes her child, because the child is, is still within her womb, is still not born, is still not physically present outside of her womb, in other words. And yet, the mother still loves her baby that is inside of her. She has not seen the child, and yet she loves the child. Certainly, we could say the very same thing about the Blessed Mother. Again, the Blessed Mother, while the baby Jesus, while the divine infant was in her womb, how much love poured out for that divine infant. And then when he was born, so much more love poured out of her immaculate heart. Again, dear friends, in Psalm, the 33rd Psalm, Psalm 33, verse 21, we hear the following. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Friends, as I so often like to say, we should always trust in the holy name of Jesus. We should always stay close to the sacred heart of Jesus. We should always make a point to stay close to the cross of our blessed Savior because it is there, dear friends, that we find our blessed Savior doing his work for us. On the cross specifically, we could say it was the altar where he was slain as the Lamb of God. Again, he was slain there for us, for you, and for me, to save us from our sins, a feat, an accomplishment we could never hope to accomplish on our own. It was only through the blood of Christ that we were able to be washed of our sins. It is through his blood that we are made whole. So many people, dear friends, in this world, and this takes me back to the point that I was making earlier, so many of us are slaves and servants to the fashions and the trends and the worldly material possessions of this world. None of these can save us. None of these are life-giving, although they many of them bring joy for a certain time. Let's, let's not quibble about that. And yet we know that all these things ultimately pass away. There is only one true joy again that is truly everlasting, and it is a relationship with our blessed Savior. It is a relationship with God. It is a relationship with our Heavenly Father again. And as St. Peter reminds us, though we have not seen him, we still believe 
and we rejoice with him, rejoice to see and joy unspeakable, full of glory. We long, dear friends, in our heart of hearts to see our blessed Savior with our own eyes, and we will, please God, one day be able to see him in all of his glory. But right now, we see him through our eyes of faith. We see him in our hearts. And is there, if you don't mind me saying so, it is there in our hearts that our blessed Lord wishes to have a throne. It is there in our heart that our blessed Lord desires to rest. It is there, dear friends, that our Lord desires to reside in our hearts. And the more that he resides in our heart, and the more that we allow him to reside in our hearts, all else of this world will go away. It will matter less and less and less. The more that Christ fills our hearts, dear friends, again, the world will not matter. The things of the world will not matter. They will matter less and less and less. So this day, dear friends, let us again, let us still reign in Easter joy to remembering with great joy in our hearts the sacrifice that our blessed Lord made on our behalf on that Good Friday by dying on the cross to atone for our sins and the fact that he rose again from the dead so that he could defeat death, so that we too would have the opportunity to share new life with him. And so I ask God to bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.